Welcome back to another episode of the Strength and Speed Podcast. I'm your host, Evan Preparis, and unfortunately, not joining me tonight is Brenna Calvert. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Atomic Climbing Holds. If you're looking to improve grip strength and get better at rigs, get better at Ninja Warrior, or get better at OCR, uh, pick up some Atomic Climbing Holds and you can set up a rig in your gym, in, in your garage, in your gym, or uh, just use them for the lat pull-down machine. So a big fan of Atomic hold, truck Climbing Holds, make sure you check them out. Today's episode, we have Noah Kaufman on. You might recognize him as the Ninja Doc, or the leader of the Wolfpack Ninjas. He's been on Ninja Warrior for a couple of seasons, uh, made it to the in, inside the top 15 competitors several times, which is like the top 1% of people that are on that show, and uh, also an emergency room doctor. So uh, Noah, welcome to the show. Uh, Evan, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. Um, I know uh, Ian Dory was supposed to be on the show also, but he bowed out last minute just like my co-host. So, well, yeah, we'll have to get him on at a different time. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, it's cool that Atomic is, you know, that you guys were shouting out to Atomic. I want to also say Atomic, great holds. We use them all the time to train. Seems like everybody uses their stuff. Yeah, they're 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 great. They're uh, sponsoring uh, the Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team, which is the team myself and Brenner are on. So. Big fan. Oh, very good. Yeah. Cool. So recently, you guys, uh, both you and Ian, were on the Overcome and Run podcast, and I believe Link Endurance. So we're going to try to avoid covering some of those same topics. Instead, we'll uh, kind of start off talking about some of your training, and then we'll go into the Wolfpack Ninja Tour, which is kind of your big event coming up this year, obviously besides yeah. Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I like about Ninja Warrior is, I mean, it's it's essentially OCR. It's It's the same sport. It's just significantly shorter. So while yeah. while you specialize in the very the shortest of the short OCR ninja, I specialize in the long stuff. So like eight to twenty four hours. So I think it's kind of oh cool. I think it's kind of cool. We're on wow. like opposite sides of the spectrum, but in the same sport. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, but I think I think you could have a better chance at, at you know what we're doing or what I'm doing than what than me trying to get into what you're doing, Evan. I mean that's. That's awesome. That's that's it's so hard to you know it's mentally challenging to keep going for that long. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a unique flavor of athletics. It's uh, yeah, definitely. We but we do overlap actually with the ninjas. Uh, Amy Pagic, Amy Magic Pagic is actually on my team. The oh, Conquer. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah. Oh, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, and then uh, I've actually raced against Evan Dollard for OCR Warrior. It was like a YouTube TV show. Uh, short course <laughs> OCR. So did you beat him? I did not. That was like that was my very early racing career, and he uh, <laughs> he put me to shame, and uh, I ended up falling off one of the holds, and uh, he beat me by a significant amount. So, well, but you know that's good. We need people like that to push us, especially in our early stages. We need people to set the bar so so we can know where we want to go and what we can accomplish. Yeah, I agree. Because after after I fell off, and that uh, you can Google OCR Warrior, and mine and Evan's name will both come up. And uh, after I fell okay. off that hold, like I went out and bought that specific hold, and like now I think it's a joke. Like, I, <laughs> right, right. So that's how it works. And you'll be happy to know. We'll actually check this out, and I know we're going to talk about it in a little bit. But Evan is going to be my co MC. He's flying out for the Wolfpack Ninja Tour, and he's going to be announcing it. Oh, great. Me. That's awesome. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? He's a character. He's a he great is. guy. He is. So, uh, you know, since since it's basically the same sport, uh, let's we'll start off, let's talk about some training. So, like, what does an average training week for you look like? Right. Well, it depends on if I'm in season or not. I'm, I'm prepping for the season now. Uh, we have found that if we start too early and don't build a, a big enough endurance base, like a cardio base, that we just start to 
we just start to peter out and we, and we really start to, you know, get beat up and so much so that we start to get injured or this and that. You know, I, I'm 42 years old, so I'm really scientific about, about it nowadays. And so when I'm in season, uh, you know, when I'm out of season, I'm just climbing and having fun and going to the gym, getting outdoors. I'll do uh, I'll do exercise bike maybe like once a week and watch a whole bunch of Netflix. I mean, it's it's not that intense. Uh, but during season, uh, a typical week for me, and this is just me, Brian does a little bit differently, and, and so does uh, Ian and Megan, but uh, and all the ninjas, you know, you got to find your own thing, uh, what works for you. But for me, I, I like to do a little bit of something six days out of the week, and I like to do a little something six days out, out of the week, and, and generally I'll have hard and easy days. And so an easy day will be, uh, you know, maybe sometimes an hour and a half to two hours on the bike, uh, low speed recovery, stretching for an hour, and um, I'll try and stay away from from ninja stuff. I might do a really easy climb, and I mean like super easy, like V zero, five nine, five ten, um, just just getting the you know everything moving, everything well-oiled and getting the heart going a little bit, getting the blood flowing and removing all the lactic acid buildup and the damage from the previous workouts. And so I'll have maybe two two to three easy days a week and two to three really hard days. And it depends where I'm at, if I'm early in the season or later in the season when I'm in really, really top shape. And my hard days, the hard days are, are pretty epic. I'll start off with uh, generally about 45 minutes of biking, and the biking will be uh, slightly more intense. I'll get my heart rate up and keep it up uh, 140 to 160, um, and and then sometime throw in some little sprints, and I'll warm up like that for about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, and then I'll warm up by doing you know a set of push-ups, a, a set of pull-ups, and um, and some uh, ab work as well, like hanging out to a bar and doing some V-ups or, or whatever. And then I'll spend uh, probably about 30, 45 minutes just doing agility stuff. So I set up cinder blocks, which I, I bought from Home Depot. I mean, they're pretty cheap. They're like, you know, a couple bucks each. And I make these courses for myself, and I run, I run through these courses, and they're always different. And they're basically just uh, foot-eye coordination and agility. And at this point, I'm just getting warmed up. I'm getting my agility um, pretty set. And then what I'll do is I'll generally run a real easy ninja course, and or, or you could call it an OCR short course because really what we're doing is ninja is kind of like a funny name. I mean, ultimately, American Ninja Warrior is kind of a fad. And, I mean, it's a different – topic, but what we're doing is OCR, and we started doing the bigger OCRs a little bit as well, and just for the record, I think all ninjas would agree, like, we're obstacle course racers. We love it. We, we love that stuff. And so, yes, we're short course specialists, and that's what our um, world is. That's what we know, and that's what's uh, being developed for the Wolf Pack Ninja Tour, But and that's what we train for. But at the same time, we I think a bunch of us have done the longer courses and we want to get better at them. So my, my hard day will continue with uh, with this kind of easy short course. And by easy, I mean it will be six uh, shortened obstacles. Uh, three of them will be upper body. Three will be lower body, something like that. And I barely get pumped. And then after that, I'll, I'll rest uh, and stretch for a little bit. And then I'll get into the meat of it, whether or not I'm alone or with – usually I'm with at least one or two other ninjas. Ian lives up near me, uh, Dan Yeager, Matt mm -hmm. Wilder, uh, Brian comes up. And then we'll – you know, and sometimes they'll warm up on their own, but we'll all meet. And then we'll start doing ninja courses. And the ninja courses that we do, we try and make – we try and make them really, really difficult, really long, really pumpy, uh, I would say significantly harder than an American Ninja Warrior course. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we fail. Um, sometimes we succeed. Uh, you're allowed to rest on the course, uh, you know, for 20 seconds at a time between obstacles. 
And we'll do that basically until our hands hurt. So we'll we'll take like three or four laps on it, cheer each other on. And that's the bulk of our workout. You know, we're very specific. We it, it And it ends up being a lot of upper body pump, a lot of uh, interval cardio, and then having to do these lower body obstacles while you're super gassed, you're super winded. And then you, and then you've got to do this like lower body jumping agility thing, which would be, a lot of these obstacles would be super easy if, you know, if you're, if you're just fresh and you're just doing one at a time. Right. And we make, we want to get to the point where the obstacles are really difficult, where easy stuff is really difficult so that there's a lot more mental game behind it and strategy. Because we know it's easy, but we know we're super gassed, and you feel like you're going to fall all the time in our workouts. And so we'll do, like, four courses like that, and then the next person will go. Or if I'm alone, I'll take a break between them because, I mean, it's really, really taxing. And uh, you're throwing your body around. It's very intense. Uh, Then I'll normally cool down with about 40, 45 minutes of, you know, heart rate 120, very easy biking, and I'm just warming down. I've got an Aerodyne at home, which has got the upper body, like you push push back and forth with your arms. I, I love that thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'll watch Netflix, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll get in, in a House of Cards episode or something, um, Breaking Bad. But anyways, you know, that's pretty much the uh, the workout, and by that time, I'm just ready to eat, you know. <laughs> and uh uh, we then you know we'll eat like a ton of food because we've probably burned ten thousand calories over. You know, we'll you'll we'll typically that'll span that whole workout that hard day workout will be about six hours for me. Oh wow! And that's what yeah that's what I do. Um, Brian works out about four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening, and I, I've tried that I can't do it. Uh, and and so, you know, and typically Brian is a little bit stronger than me and a little bit, you know, uh, he's got a little bit more endurance. He's just a a slightly better athlete all around. And so I'm a little bit more strategic. Uh, I'm, I'm more technical. Like the, when I do things, I I think through things a lot, a a lot more than I think Brian does because he's got more skill, you know, one arm upper body power lock off skill. Mm. Uh, So it's very interesting. You have to approach your training differently. But, you know, then I'm, you know, then I take a hot shower and I, you know, I ice or I, I take care of myself. And the next day I'll have one of those real easy days. And I'll, I'll have six days like that alternating back and forth. And then I'll take a, a rest day totally on, you know, Sunday or something. And some of it depends on my work shift because I am an ER doc and uh, it, it's tough to juggle them sometimes. Right. I think you said on one of the other podcasts you'll work like a huge chunk of time straight and then have a couple days off, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's new as of this year, um, as of January. Now I work eight night shifts in a row and then I've I've got 23 days off. So I'm I'm loving that schedule. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's uh, that's actually pretty good for getting in like solid blocks of training there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, in that week, you know, that week will – this is new for me, but that week's probably going to be an easier week overall because I really need energy to be, a, a, you know, effective at my job and be a real good emergency medicine doc, which is what everybody wants when they come in with an emergency. <laughs> now, I think that, I think that your, uh, your training lines up with a lot of the way I do programming and the way I train myself. You know, I typically do like three building weeks where I'm increasing intensity or increasing volume and then a a recovery week to kind of consolidate those gains before I started over again. Right, and th- right. And then the uh, same thing with my weekly schedule has like two kind of very hard cardio days where I'm doing like intervals uh, that are long and short. And then most of my other days are just easy running. I'm just logging miles. So I'm actually yeah. kind of surprised at how similar a lot of that stuff is. Yeah, and you know, actually, I would run. I like running more uh, in terms of the the benefits and what I get out of it. It's just at this point, uh, you know, I've had I've had some back issues, and so running's real hard on my knees and back. I think my form isn't perfect. I'm just not naturally a, a great runner, so I do the low impact stuff. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, you mentioned it. Uh, 
questions. And you know, some sometimes, and I've pra- I've uh, experimented with periodization, and I've found that I get some real great gains out of periodization if I do like a power month, and then more of a or like I start with a good base of endurance, and then I'll I'll work into power endurance and then power at the end. Um, and that that's a real good way to do things as well. And I've done that a couple years for Ninja. Um, but it, it takes a lot more discipline. Uh, and and on, honestly, it's just quite a bit harder and quite a bit more uh, grueling and scientific. And nowadays, I honestly, I, I want to have fun. And the training has got to be fun for me. And Ninja courses are fun. Mm-hmm. So it's, re- it's real hard for me. I know it's good for me, but... It's really difficult to get in the gym and weight lift, even though I, I know I need to, and and do these. I love CrossFit too, and do these like CrossFit type workouts and these just kill yourself workouts. Uh, I, I want to do it. It's just you know, it's uh, I, I rather enjoy my myself at this point in time in my forties. Yeah, I think you need to you need to really enjoy your training, otherwise. You're not going to put the same amount of like zeal or effort into it, so I think there's a lot to be said about that. Um, so, right, absolutely, absolutely. I know a lot of people put in applications for the show. A lot of my obstacle course racing friends every year they're getting, you know, they're kind of oh, I just put in my application. Um, so for the people who end up getting picked up, is there any? Yeah. Do you have any recommended solutions for? All right, so I don't have a Ninja Warrior gym near my house. Um, right. maybe my house or I live in an apartment and it's not conducive to like physically build obstacles. Like what should yeah. you have a recommendation for those people? I, I do. I, I totally do. I have a couple recommendations. Um, first thing is first, they, there's like over 70,000 people who apply for Ninja Warrior and like 600 of us get chosen. And, and you know, some of us now, like I'm the ninja doc and whatever, it's like funny, but it's great. And I started a long time ago when it was a lot easier to get on the show. So I have this persona for the show. I have, it's much easier for me to get chosen for everybody else who's trying for the first time. It's really, really difficult. And I will tell you, you know, I know, all the producers and everything, we've interviewed the executive producer, Anthony Storm. He had a great podcast um, when when we interviewed him on, on the Wolfpack Ninja podcast. And he stressed this, and I stress it as well. You've got to have a really good story. Got it. Does, everybody can is good. Everybody's a good athlete. Everybody deserves a chance at the course. Everybody, I mean, you would be amazed at how many people can do one-arm pull-ups and can do – you know, a, a, a six or a five five minute mile or whatever, and it's just incredible how good uh, of you, you know how how deep the field is for people who want to do ninja, and they don't really care how great of an athlete you are. They show people who fall on the first step all the time. Like as a matter of fact, they want a cross section. They want it to be fair, and they don't want it to be just the best. Um, Athletes, they want it to be inspirational, aspirational. They want it to be a good TV show. It's a TV show. It's not really a sport. It, it kind of is a sport, but it, it's more of a reality TV show. So if you were really keen on getting onto American Ninja Warrior, in the first 15 seconds of your uh, video, don't try and impress them with one-arm pull-ups or this or the other thing. Really have a good, solid story. They love the overcome stories. I had cancer. I overcame it. I was an alcoholic. I overcame it. I mean, don't make something up, but everybody's got something that, you know, like everybody's got something that was a hardship in their life. Or like I wanted to go and become an Olympian, and I I didn't make it, and I, and I had to deal with that. And You know, whatever. Whatever your story is, focus on the story. Show your personality. And that's what's going to get you on TV. Now, that being said, and do that in the first 15 seconds, like wow somebody, and try and have a good production value, all this stuff. Now, that being said, look, 69,000 of you are not going to make it onto American Ninja Warrior, but you're athletes, and you love this stuff, and you still want to try an American Ninja Warrior course. The solution really is come out and do the Wolfpack Ninja course because we've got a full pro course that we've spent 
over a hundred grand on. <laughs> so, you know, like it's going to be an incredible event. And uh, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but if you don't get on, you know, keep training hard and don't worry about it. Train for OCR stuff and train for Ninja type stuff, the short course, the OCR short course stuff, and come out to the Wolfpack Ninja Tour. And uh, and, and you'll still get to compete. And actually, you'll get to compete for more money than uh, is on the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you reiterated reiterated those numbers because it really drives to me it drives that point home like you need a hook to get yourself right. on the you, show you need you need something that makes you unique and stand above the crowd. Uh, one of my exactly. friends he just showed me his video and I that was the comment actually I made to him I was like I was like I think you need to emphasize your story a little more because you know he talks about it very quickly and then moves into like here's me doing all sorts of crazy ninja maneuvers in a gym and it's like yeah I'm sure they right. get a lot of that. So. Right. Totally. I guess so. Since you brought it up, and you know, let's kind of jump into some of the Wolfpack Ninja Tour. So, uh, just kind of hit some of the high points. You know, how much prize money is being offered, and uh, I know you have a whole bunch of like essentially tiered type obstacles. So, just kind of give us a run through of uh, what that consists of, and the dates and uh, location. Yeah, sure. Well, it's April 29th at Magnus Arena. It's in this huge college arena, uh, DU Arena. Uh, that holds 6,000 people. So we're going to have and, – and it's looking really good for a sellout. And so, uh, yeah, the the main part of this competition is OCR short course, nin, ninja course or whatever. Um, the It's going to be a lot easier than Ninja Warrior because it's racing. And so if you've ever seen Team Ninja Warrior on Esquire, it's even easier than that. Uh, the, basically, it's going to be head-to-head racing – there's thirty thousand dollars in cash prizes, uh, so that's quite a bit of money. You know, Ninja, unless you're the top guy, well, even the top guy, you still have to finish the course in order to make any money. We've only had one person really make money on the show, and that was Isaac Caldiero. He made a million dollars, but and, you know, the rest of us have made a, have made a little money here and there off of uh, fast times. But you know, you make a couple hundred bucks uh, doing the show generally you have to pay to travel but so we've got you know over thirty thousand dollars in cash prizes it's head-to-head racing and basically what it is is saturday and sunday it's 29th and 30th of april you come in uh you buy a chance to either pre-qualify which is you have to uh complete a certain number of obstacles in 30 minutes or sorry in two hours and uh and then if you pre-qualify, you get to run this pro course and log a time. Or you can actually just buy a Wolf Pass. And a Wolf Pass is this thing that allows you uh, – it, it bundles with a spectator ticket, and it allows you to go straight to the pro course. If, if you're a pro and you don't want to pre-qualify on these, on these easier obstacles, uh, then you could just do that. Everybody's allowed maximum of, of three tries on the course. And you step up to the course – uh, somebody says on your mark, it said go, and you run the course as fast as you can. Now, at the end of the course, there's like six different warp walls of different sizes, and so you pick which size. There's a little bit of strategy involved because uh, you you might try the, the buzzers on the top of the biggest warp wall, and if you do a slightly smaller warp wall, then you'll get up you know super easily, but then you have to run along the top of the warp walls like a staircase. And hit that buzzer anyway, so it'll take a little bit more time. But you log your time. You come in Saturday or Sunday, you log, you step up, you log a time, and let's say you get 45 seconds. You, you then are put into a leaderboard, and the leaderboard logs everybody's times. And let's say we have – I'm just throwing a number out there. We don't know yet. But let's say we have 200 competitors ultimately, and we could have 1,000. Who knows? But – if we've got 200 competitors, you're going to be somewhere in that field, uh, you know, based on the time that you got in the course. If you're in the top 16 in the pro division, then you'll be able to race the rest of the pros. Uh, there's a there's actually five divisions. There's there's men's division women, uh, and women's division for pro, and then men's division and women's division for amateur. And then in the youth division, which is, uh, you know, basically 12 to 18 years old. And the cool thing about this is in the men's 
uh, pro division, all the prize money is equal between men and women, uh, no matter how deep the field. And so it's very egalitarian and it's uh, just the right the right thing to do. But so I think first place for men and women's pro is seventy five hundred bucks. Hmm. And second place, second place is twenty five hundred bucks. Third place is a thousand. Amateurs uh, can win uh, over a thousand dollars for first place, and then youth actually could even win, um, I think, five hundred bucks. I'd have to look at the prize uh, structure. But anyways, if you make the the leaderboard for your division and you make the top, uh, you know, eight or sixteen, depending on which division you're in. I think amateurs were only taking the top eight. If you make the top 16 for pro, and a lot of the OCR guys are going to be pro, um, then you get to race on Sunday night finals in front of like 6,000 screaming fans. <laughs> nice. It's going to it's going to be really awesome, and uh, the course is all lit up. It's it's pretty uh, it, it's cool. There's a blue side, a red side. Uh, there's some elements of obstacles that actually uh, both both competitors can use. So there's some strategy there, and mm. it's basically whoever goes farthest the fastest or hits the buzzer first. And it's, you know, if you make the top 16, you get to race in front of all these people. There's going to be the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, it's like a huge sporting event, and it's legit sporting event. There's not a lot of rules. You just can't tr- touch the truss. There's a lot of safety padding. It's very safe. Um, you just got to get from point A to point B. So the parkour guys are going to be there, the climbers, the OCRs, everybody is going to be there. And uh, it's it's going to be a great way to test yourself and, and see where you're at and, and what you can really do. And uh, ultimately, it's a, it's a double elimination uh, head-to-head race. And so we'll just pair up the ninjas and, or, or the, 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 you know, the obstacle course runners, the competitors, one by one. And uh, and we'll see. And and so if you lose your first race or you fall or something didn't go well, you get put into the comeback bracket, and you can actually come back and win the whole thing. So it's dull elimination, and you can look online more about what that entails. But I mean, there's trampolines, and you're jumping to like atomic holds, basically, um, and it's very, very exciting. Uh, we we are not using the difficult, you know giant red balls and things that are really hard to hold on to. We want the course to be fast and fun and we want it to be a real race. And so it's a real sprint. The course will probably, people will probably be able to do the course in less than a minute. uh, The pros for sure. And so that's kind of a summary. There's also going to be kids classes during the weekend uh, with all the pro ninjas. A lot of the pros that you've seen on the show, Jesse Graff, Megan Martin, Joe Moravsky, the first American Ninja Warrior, Jeff Britton, J.J. Woods, Flip Rodriguez, uh, Parkour Master, Jesse LaFlair, I mean, Jen Tavernier, like all these amazing athletes are going to be out there competing. Actually, Rose Wetzel. Ro- uh, do you know Rose from of Spartan? Course, of course I know Rose. <laughs> Rose yep. is, yeah, we're flying Rose out. She's vying for a spot on the pro team. She totally deserves it. Um, and she's going to be competing uh, hopefully, and she's—I de- mean, she's definitely going to be there no matter what. Um, Evan Dollar, Drew Dreschel, uh, okay. Cal- is a, gonna- it should be exciting. A lot of big names coming out. Of, yeah, in the Ninja community. So yeah, and when what I'm excited about is that there's going to be some dark horses, you know, from and we've had Spartans, uh, Spartan pros, and OCR guys, Tough Mudders. A lot of OCR guys want to come out and steal some thunder because these are, you know, like. Anybody can come out and be the dark horse. And uh, so it's exciting. We've got the national climbing champion. He's coming out, Nathaniel Coleman. He just won uh, the the national uh, competition. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's some big guns. But then again, this is going to be the first major comp. This is the largest competition of its kind ever. And, uh, you, you know, in an arena for short course OCR, and, it, and here's, the, here's the thing that I love being a doctor. It benefits Children's Hospital of Colorado. Um, they're getting a whole bunch of money out of it, and they get a percent of ticket sales. Hopefully we break even or even make a little bit of money so that we can continue this on, make it a tour, and go all over the country. But, you know, at the heart of what we want to do is impact kids and, and 
be role models and just have people who live a healthy life and have a lot of fun doing this. So, you know, it's coming together and it's really, really fun. It sounds like you guys have done a good job at least kind of setting up the first event. I know a lot of OCR companies try to go super big, super fast, and it, you know, they outrun, they outpace themselves. So I think doing one event, putting out a quality event and a quality show, I think, I think that's a good move. And I'm kind of excited. I mean, very excited to see what what you guys produce. I won't be able to make it, but one of my teammates, uh, Cody Payton, said he's going to be heading out there to race. So. Oh, cool, cool. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll look forward to meeting Cody. And uh, too bad you won't be there for the first one. But I have a I have a feeling that uh, we'll cross paths <laughs> at some point in the near future. You yeah. know what's interesting? What's interesting is actually you mentioned a lot of companies kind of go big, too big, too fast. And I think that happened to Battlefrog, you know. Um, and interestingly, we picked up the Battlefrog uh, event, like the Denver kind of area, Colorado event, one of the event coordinators and managers. Her name's Katie Ayala, and she's an OCR uh, superstar. She's she's so cool, and she has helped us so much with putting this thing together and making it a great experience, and she's got so much experience that – uh, you know, I, I mean, she's really made this event into something super f- professional. And we, uh, we, we've we got a ton of money to do this because there's a bunch of investors that came in. So having her skill along with the rest of the team and uh, it, it's just really come together and it's great to see. We actually have – this is going to blow your mind, Evan. We've got people coming from – we've got about 10 guys from Australia. We've got people from the U.K., uh, from Ottawa, Calgary, Nova Scotia, New Jersey, California, Ohio. I mean, it, it's really insane, uh, the, the feedback. We've almost sold out of VIP tickets. And, you know, there, there is some interesting kind of uh, aspect. You know, the ninjas are there, so we're, we're definitely trying to attract some kids, have ninja classes. The, there's a VIP catered party uh, for all the, the VIPs, and the VIPs basically get to, like, compete they get to watch they get front row seats so it, it's pretty interesting i you know i mean maybe it'd be worth telling people if they're interested in checking it out it's definitely going to be historic it's gonna be a lot of fun just go to wolfpack ninja tour.com www.wolfpack ninja tour.com and uh and yeah get yourself some tickets cool well, i'm i'm excited i think uh you know i i've actually i've criticized ninja war in the past for essentially being a TV show, which is what it is, um, but obviously there's phenomenal athletes oh, totally, in there. Totally. Um, yeah. And I like that you guys are bringing it. Not that it's not a sport before, but like you're bringing it more. It, it's 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 even more legitimate now. Uh, like bring it more it, to the sporting realm. It wasn't so. a sport, Evan. I mean, look, I'll tell I'll tell you what, I, and, and people may not know this, but I'm gonna. I mean, here the cat is out of the bag. When I'm on Ninja Warrior. A lot of it is kind of like, man, I wish this was more of an athletic competition because for some people the course is wet, for some, you know, for some people it's dry. Um, they rerun people's orders. Some people they let them go again. I mean, there's That's a lot crazy. of shenanigans. Yeah, it's not like a legitimate sport. It is a really good TV show. It's it's a legitimate course, and we don't get to see it before. And you're right, there's legitimate athletes out there, and I'm not hating on Ninja Warrior. They do an incredible job. But remember, they're making this inspirational TV show. They never claim to be a sport. They claim to have the world's hardest obstacle course, which they do. You know? And yeah, no doubt. Uh, and so, uh, you know, and, and so they're not, there's nothing like, uh, you know, crazy about what they're doing. They're not claiming to be like the NFL or some kind of amazing sport. But that's what we want to do is we want to say, hey, look, Let's make this a sport, and so we're gonna make it a sport, and give every, give all those seventy thousand people who want to compete in it a chance to compete on something. You started breaking up a little bit there so. at the end, uh, but I think we got the we got the message across. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I know for yeah, I, well, so as an as an athlete for me, like I know I, I yeah. reduce a lot of costs for racing and you know make money by having, like, sponsors. So one of my, like, gripes of the show is, you know, you can't wear any logos, like, at any point, you know, because that's right. violating whatever t- uh, terms of agreement they have with their uh, the cameras. 
So with you guys going from Wolfpack Ninja being like, you know, a team name on the show, and you had your own logo, like you're using the same logo for the actual tour. So does that mean yeah. you have to change your logo when you go back on the show this year? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, no idea. I have no idea. Here's here's the weird thing is that they <coughs> Wolfpack Ninjas is like was born inside of American Ninja Warrior, right? So right. We have <coughs> excuse me. We have uh, we've got the brand. We've got it trademarked, and now we're incorporating all of the top ninjas into it so that we can kind of diversify because ninjas don't get paid to do American Ninja Warrior. We don't really make that much money because most people, well, nobody does the course really. I mean, two people have ever done the course, Jeff Britton, the first American Ninja Warrior, and Isaac Caldiero, the first grand champion. And, and so – Just want to interrupt real quick. So yeah. did, did did Jeff get zero dollars? Yeah, Jeff got zero dollars. Oh that that was eating – so I watched that whole season. That was kind of the first season I kind of got into Ninja Warrior, and I was like – I was furious for him. I was so angry after watching it. I was like, did they just give him zero dollars? Like, this is unbelievable. And then, like, you know, I'll talk about it about Ninja Warrior something on the show, but, like, you know, they didn't even recognize him on the Facebook page the next day. I was, like, so – as an athlete, I was just very bothered by that. Um, you know, at least being, like, Jeff's the I first think, one. I think most and, of us were. Oh, Crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it was crazy, and uh, I think nobody ex – they didn't know how to deal with it. And in their minds, like the show's minds, there was only going to be one Ninja Warrior, like, champion. And so it didn't even matter to them if someone finished it. But to the rest of the world and to me and to everybody else, even though Isaac was, like, you know, a great, great friend, we were all like, wait a second. What, yeah. what just happened? Like – we're psyched Isaac took it down, but Jeff was, like, the first. And, like, then there wasn't a lot of attention that he got. And uh, But, you know, now he's team captain of our pro team. He's on a salary with us. Um, he He's getting recognized by the show, and a lot of people now is the first. So, yeah, he didn't make a million dollars, but at the end of the day, he has that title, you know. Like, he's got that first American Ninja Warrior title. That's... That's pretty serious. That's uh, yeah. that's worth that's that might be worth more than a million dollars to some people, type of thing, you know. So uh, I always oh, well, I always say my results are worth more than the prize money I get, but for a million dollars, yeah. I might change my mind. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It really. So you know, he did uh, somebody. You know, some people put together a GoFundMe for him, and he got. I think he ended up getting from fans. He got a you know fifteen thousand dollars or something like that. But you know, I think that Jeff's future is very bright, and he's going to be recognized, and he's going to be rewarded, and it's going to be whether or not it's through the Wolfpack Ninja Tour. He's you know one of the best that there ever was, and so um, you know, I mean, he's he's just this heroic figure who's a really, really great family guy and a good athlete uh, and an amazing guy. And so uh, I, I think that overall, you know, he he sets the 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 tempo and he's the guy right now. And so he's going to come out and compete and Wolfpack Ninja Tour. And even if he doesn't win, he's the pro, he's the team captain of our pro team. We've got 14 of the best. American Ninja Warriors on there. And, uh, you know, he's going to set the bar high for people to come out and try and beat him. And, uh, yeah, it's it's hard that he didn't get any money, and now they've changed the rules on American Ninja Warrior so that if there are two finishers, now they split the money. But it was too late. Oh, God. That, makes, that almost makes yeah, it here. <laughs> oh. I know. It's like, it's like the next year. It's like you missed your opportunity. Look, Jeff did great. He's okay with it. He's got the title. He's happy. There's going to be, you know, American Ninja Warrior is a fad. It's a TV show. At some point, it's got a life cycle. What we're trying to do with Wolfpack Ninja Tour, and we're going to be able to use our brand. We're going to be able to use our logo, and hopefully they'll let us use it on the show. I mean, I doubt we're very much on their radar. I mean, they love us. We've helped make the show very successful. They and the Wolfpack is a big part of the show, so I don't know why they wouldn't. You know, they let us run in it 
last year. But ultimately, we're building a sport, right? We're building an OCR short course slash Ninja Warrior uh, racing event. And we're building something that's going to last and something that we're going to grow into. And we've got a um, just a great group of very motivated people who are very inspirational. And it's going to be exciting to get everybody out and, and watch it go down. It, it's going to be uh, really fun to fill that, that arena and have this historic first sporting event. I, want, I think everybody should come out. It's going to blow people's mind how cool this is going to be. Awesome. Well, a couple more questions, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. So as, yeah. as an athlete, you know, I race a lot all season. I, I, race, I race a lot each year. I have, like, yeah. one major event that's kind of my big event. Uh, sure. But I still have other opportunities. So what's it like to have, you know, your entire training year come down to, like, one single event? Or do you do other kind of smaller things? Like, uh, I know some of the local ninja gyms have competition. Like, do you ever do those? Yeah, okay. So, no, that's a great question. And for the first couple of years, there were no ninja gyms. There was there were no competitions. Uh, now there's these great leagues, like the National Ninja League, the UNAA. And, of course, we're starting this massive sport you know, slash league, the Wolfpack Ninja Tour, which is, you know, the first professionally and, and, and big, big funded event. Um, but these things are all new. And so, you know, I love rock climbing. And so I rock climb all year. I do, don't compete in other things. I know Brian does, Jake Murray does, Matt Wilder, Dan Yeager. A bunch of our friends and the other Wolves, they definitely are training ninja and uh, doing ninja events a lot of the year. Uh, I'm having fun rock climbing. And so having this, uh, the, the American Ninja Warrior be this one event, uh, and it's like you get one fall and you're out, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, it's no, it's, uh, it's not that fun. It's very nerve wracking. Uh, I'm a very confident person. I do well on the course. I've done very well, but I still get, I get really nervous. And they film it like in the middle of the night, so and they're they're screaming at you, you know, like, "Hey, ninjas, come over here!" And they're feeding you pizza. I mean, it's it's just a weird scene, you know. It's like a TV show. Uh, it's a it's a weird scene. So, I I like I like the running of the courses. I love it actually. It's super fun. Uh, the courses are super pro. They're amazing. It's super fun. Uh, but in the end. It's yeah, it's hard having that just that one event. So that's changing rapidly, and I think most people now view American Ninja Warrior as the big, the big event, and it is definitely the uh, the thing that people look forward to. But I think now everybody is doing events all year, and there's you know this event might have a five hundred dollar prize, and this event might have a thousand dollar prize, and and then of course the Wolfpack Ninja Tour is going to be big. Uh, and then there's American Ninja Warrior, which is like the TV show, and it's, it's, you know, it's got the weird factor. It's in the middle of the night, but it's also just this epic time for everybody to get together. But yeah, it it, it sucks when you go out and uh, and you train so hard, and that was it for the whole year. Mm -hmm. But now there's Team Ninja Warrior, and you know, it's real fun to have. That's a great event, and you get to go head to head in this like in a bracket. So, yeah, that looks like a ton of fun, especially being on teams and it's how fast paced it is. Oh yeah, and this year I, some amazing thing, ha amazing things happen, and that's about to be on Esquire TV. That is really fun. Uh, I think that's going to be on in March here, and yeah, keep an eye on Team Think Tank. Myself, Matt Wilder, Asia Gretschka. <laughs> it was a it was a pretty epic season this year. It, it was good. Keep an eye on us. <laughs> cool. Look forward to watching it. Uh, speaking of other or spinoff shows or other shows, have you seen the attraction yeah. or the coming attraction for Ultimate Beastmaster? Yes, yes, that looks amazing. And actually, our friend and we were just talking about him, Pro Team Captain Jeff Britton. He is working on that show. He's not, you know, he hasn't been doing Ninja. He he got a job with uh, with uh, you know one of the obstacle course companies that makes this uh, crazy thing. I can't wait to see this February 24th. And what he's been talking about, about how cool uh, the set is and the obstacle courses and the competition, this is going to be unbelievable. This is going to take it to a whole new level, I've heard. 
Cool. That looks... Yeah, I, I just saw one preview pretty quick, and it looked like... I mean, it looked exactly like Ninja Warrior to me. Uh, you know, with yeah. obviously di- slightly different obstacles, but... I mean, it looks like they just cut and pasted the same design. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, that was bound to happen. Uh, and really, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I've heard that it's definitely uh, a, quite a bit different in terms of the actual obstacles and what they've done. But I think, and, and I don't know this for sure, but I think it was the same company that made Ninja Warrior made Ultimate Beastmasters course. Ah, okay. And I've heard that through the grapevine from from a couple of different people. And so, you know, they've got the expertise. They make a great course. Uh, and and they're just a great company. And I think they're going around the world making most of these. It's become an international phenomenon. So they're making like, you know, uh, uh, Turkey, American, or Turkey, not American, Turkey Ninja Warrior, uh, Australian Ninja Warrior, and uh, Germany Ninja Warrior, UK Ninja Warrior. There's all these different ones popping up, and this company is kind of sitting in pole position. I mean, they know how to make these courses, and... They've got all the IP, so they're in a great place. And they're a great bunch of guys. They're a bunch of rock climbers, so <laughs> we know those guys. So are, are you are you allowed to compete on that show, or is other A&W people, or are you signed an exclusivity agreement? If you can ask right. Them. No, I can't. Yeah, we, we signed an exclusivity agreement with American Ninja Warrior, uh, but a lot of the ninjas are talking, and, you know, I mean, if, if this is going to be one of the next – big things there's a lot of ninjas who want to do, do ultimate beast master and you know we so uh there's there's all kinds of there's all kinds of loopholes and ways i mean you know, and ultimately nbc um is a great company and american ninja warrior they want to see us have fun and succeed and compete on other you know be in other competitions and whatnot so they can approve us to uh, to do these shows. So even if our agreement says we're not supposed to do it, they can be like, no, you guys are allowed to do that. We'll let you do ultimate beast master. And, and so I think there even might be a ninja who did ultimate beast master. But again, I, there's a lot of fuzzy details and a lot of, you know, a, a lot of talk behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who knows? Okay. What so, yet. so that's good. Uh, I think that's a, I always think it's good to have some competition because it prevents it from being a monopoly and gives gives a little more power back to the athletes. So I think uh, I think that that'll be an interesting show to watch and a good thing for you guys as athletes. Yeah, and there's there's still TV shows. You know, I mean, they're not like I mean they're competitions, but they're still TV shows. You know, I mean there's a, there's a difference between like the NFL and professional football, and when you watch that on TV, and American Ninja Warrior, you yeah. know, or, or Beastmaster even. Like, uh, they're, they're just not they're, – there's just a, a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that makes them not competitions. Like, in the rules, it even says the producers can change the rules at any time based on whatever they want to do. Oh. So that's, that's not a competition. That's a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> And I, we're, we're not going to run through the whole story, but if anyone has not listened to Overcome and Run podcast uh, with Jay Bodie and uh, Noah Kaufman and uh, Ian Dory that was on there, they, they tell you they, you guys tell the story about Brian Arnold, which again I was like I was finishing a run at the time and I, I was like losing it basically. Yeah. He falls, like a thing comes unscrewed and he falls off like stage what was it stage four or stage, stage three? three yeah. Stage yeah. three. And yeah, uh, just, basically just, has to do the course again. He would have been the first man. I guarantee you, he was ready. He would. He wouldn't have fallen at the. He wouldn't have been pumped out. He would have been the first and won that year. I think uh, five hundred grand for sure. Like I, I'm, I, I would bet a thousand dollars on it. Cool. Well, Noah, thanks for coming on the show. Um, for those of you who are Ninja Warrior fans or athletes, and you're looking to cross over into OCR, uh, Conquer the Gauntlet is a good place to start. It's a mandatory obstacle completion, and for those going for cash prizes, the obstacles are fairly hard. Uh, we've had several ninjas on the podium before, including Amy Padgett, Maggie Thorne, and a PJ Granger. They've all been uh, first, second, or third at one point or another. So uh, those A and W fans looking to um, do some do some obstacle course racing, that's a good place to start. It's four miles long. 
Uh, make sure you head out to Denver and the Wolfpack Ninja Tour. No, is there anyone else or anyone you guys want to give a shout out to before we take off? Oh yeah, I mean just all the obstacle course racers out there. Th- thank you guys so much for developing the sport. Well, I think we're all kind of moving towards one big obstacle racing sport, whether it's short course or you know medium, you know long course, Spartan, Tough Mudder. All these things. We're all part of the same family of obstacle course racers, no matter what our backgrounds are. And so just a big shout out to everybody who's, you know, either weekend warriors or doing these conquer the gauntlets, which by the way, I want to do, it sounds amazing. And I've heard really good things about it. So get out there and do that race, get out to the Wolfpack Ninja tour. I would, uh, yeah, I mean, follow us on our social media. Uh, we, we've got a, a bunch of tips all the time. Uh, we're, we're at Wolfpack Ninja on uh, Twitter and Facebook and at Wolfpack Ninja Warrior on uh, on the Instagram. And, yeah, I mean, you can follow me as well on uh, on Twitter if you want. I'm Climber Doc, like a rock climber, like Climber Doc. And then I'm Noah Kaufman, MD, just all one word, on uh, just one F, one N, Noah Kaufman, MD, on Instagram. So, yeah, no, thanks so much for having me, Evan, and uh, really look forward to competing with everybody and putting on a a great show in Denver and keep doing Ninja, keep doing obstacles, keep keep training. All right, Noah, thanks again for coming on the show. Uh, That's all we got for the Strength and Speed podcast. Thank you so much, Evan. It was a pleasure being here. 